Oh, thank you so much. And thank you, um, Kate, for your work and insights. And um, it's a good time to sort of come in and share some of the work that we've been doing to address some of the mountains you, you noted um, in your book. So myself, Aaron and Colette have come to know each other well over the last couple of years. And we want to talk to you tonight about midwifery matters and unlocking the potential for well-being. And there'll be lots of opportunities to hear from Aaron and Colette about the work that they've been doing and the work we've been doing to support midwives and maternity staff throughout NHS England and beyond. We've already heard a lot about the challenging context for midwives and maternity workers and it's really important and good to hear that these are being named and discussed and acknowledged. I think that there have been personal and professional challenges for so many people through the pandemic and it's been wonderful that Matflix and the Maternity and Midwifery Hour and New Zoo have been you know creating a space for these to be discussed and addressed and um, we've too been able to hear and see some of those play out both personally for ourselves um, but also for the people that we aim to support we do want to start by saying a big thank you to everybody currently working and who has continued to support families in and across maternity and perinatal services. It's really important to continue our thanks and gratitude for everybody that shows up every day uh, to make a difference to new families as they journey through their own experiences. So thank you to everybody for the work that you do and, and to those listening tonight. I just wanted to take a moment to acknowledge the work that we do at All for Maternity and we've been doing for the last seven years alongside the work we've done throughout our careers. So I'm really fortunate to be in a position where I work as a midwife and have followed in the footsteps of many of my family, including my mum, Sheena Byram. And um, I, Aaron was laughing at me before because he was saying, oh, you look about 12 in that picture mm -hmm. in the middle. Um, and I was like, oh, gosh, I don't really look old now. But um, it's really nice to look back on moments that I've shared. Um, but this slide really is to um, acknowledge that we've been listening to students and midwives and maternity staff for a long time. My mum has worked as a midwife for over 40 years across the NHS in um, position, practical positions and positions of leadership. And I've worked for the last over 20 years in midwifery across the country and around the world. And latterly, in the last 13 years as a midwifery educator, working with students and obviously other educators and researchers. And we, we know we hear the stories of those challenges and difficulties. And so we wanted to do something about it. And everything that we do across all for maternity is about supporting, learning, sharing and caring. And so it felt really important when the pandemic hit and we heard about the extra impact of that on staff, it was really important to us to find ways to offer increased support and we were invited um, by the national team and um, the chief midwife office to explore ways that we could offer support. It required everybody to show up and offer that kind of support together as a collective. And we were able to do that in a small way, providing a meaningful programme, creating a meaningful programme for midwives. And that's what we'd like to talk to you about tonight. So um, we came together um, just before Christmas in 2021 and um, I, I, I actually was myself undergoing some coaching support from the wonderful Colette. Um, so I had been unfortunate in experiencing some personal and professional challenges across my life. Um, my husband had a stroke and we were facing the consequences of that. Uh, it was just after I'd finished my PhD and gone through a very busy work life um, stressors. And then we hit the pandemic and we know the pressures that everybody faced through that. And so I was very fortunate to 
um, have Colette as a family friend who was able to offer me support alongside the online One Thought programme that Aaron has developed. And I was able to use that support to really find a new way to approach my context by really very much focusing on my own clarity and well-being. And we've been working together now and it really made sense to me to find ways to bring what I'd been able to access into the work for my own organisation initially, but then also to think about how this could make a difference to the midwives. And so we work really closely to develop a programme that's now available. Um, it, it was piloted in 2022 with 50 midwives from across NHS England in a two-phased online programme. We launched it in an online format because of the pandemic so that it could be super easily available. But actually, we realised that it was super accessible that way and it was really successful. We were able to build really meaningful connections with those that attended the programme. It was also easy to access and wasn't overburdensome in terms of the time commitment because we knew that was also an ongoing pressure for those people that wanted to gain support. So it was an 18-hour programme over 10 weeks, but that the resources that the midwives were left with were available to them for a 12-month window and beyond if they wanted to choose that. So I just hand over to Aaron and Colette, who are going to share a little bit of insights from the phase one programme, the One Thought programme. Well, um, thank you, Anna. It's so nice to be with everybody uh, today. Thank you so much for having us. So I wanted to kind of give a little bit of an introduction about what, what One Thought brings to things. And as you can imagine from uh, the name of our organisation, One Thought, we're basically focused on one thing. And it's one thing that is doesn't get really enough attention. So in the things that we've talked about so far with challenges that 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 people face within their work, within their life, within their own minds, the missing piece that we really want to highlight is the potential for well-being that unbeknownst to most of us is focusing on the potential for people to have well-being under any circumstance and how natural and um, how much easier that can be than people think. And the vital link that having well-being and clarity gives us under challenging circumstances. Um, so that missing piece, I've worked with people for that missing piece within their own mental health challenges, within families, within relationships and within organisations. Um, and it's amazing what changes when you go from feeling stuck and burdened in a pressured, stressed, distressed state of mind and go to a clearer state of mind. So one of the starkest examples that I can think of is working with an organization that was under a huge amount of stress and people saying that they couldn't stand it anymore because the demands of the work and the pressure that they were under was just fatiguing and stressful and if we weren't going to help take those pressures off them, nothing could change. But the one thing that they hadn't looked at was their potential for a clearer state of mind in the same circumstance. And it was very challenging to get them to consider that that was possible. But when we did, one of the things that they realized was there had been periods where one of the things that they loved about their job was how busy and pressurized and demanding it was. So there's this potential to have a completely different experience of the same circumstances that it's generally obscured and camouflaged so we don't get to benefit from that possibility. And the beauty of the program uh, working with midwives was to spend time with such a committed, heartfelt group who are feeling under pressure and struggling, and then for them to discover the potential to have a clearer state of mind in the same circumstance and see that could change challenging work relationships into more synergistic relationships of goodwill. 
you can take any area, you can start to see any area where your state of mind is challenged and find a clearer state of mind. So going from anxiety about presentations to being comfortable with presentations, feeling like you couldn't bear to go into work to realizing, oh, you could go into work and you could actually have a good day. So it's opening up that potential for, for, for a different state of mind and a new experience of clarity. So Colette, I don't know if you wanted to say a little bit about uh, the program itself. Yeah, for sure. And I want to just echo um, what Anna and um, Aaron have said, that being here is absolutely wonderful, absolutely wonderful. And I know the work that that you all do um, is, is incredibly, you know, incredibly important. And certainly um, as a mother of two children, um, you know, I've had my moments with you all and um, I'm forever grateful. And so working with Anna uh, was was a fantastic thing for me um, to be able to, to work with her. And then the idea that we could all work together was fantastic. I absolutely love that. Um, and so when we did put this program together uh, in a way that actually would be able, people would be able to connect with it and connect with us, um, I... I was the, the kind of lifestyles that you have and and the different pressures that you have around that. And um, and so I've run this program with with the midwives and I've also run it with uh, businesses and all kinds of different um, different organizations. And actually, the really interesting thing is that everybody's everybody everybody that comes to it and comes on the program has a different outcome. And I think that's that's been one of the things that I really, really like is that different people get different things out of it. But the the one thread and theme that I see that goes all the way through it is people then start to have a different relationship with their thoughts. And, um, you know, Sue mentioned at the start about awareness. And, you know, we talk about that. We talk about listening. Um, we talk about resilience and where it comes from and how you can tap into it. And I know for all of us, uh, for all of us, that's really important in our in our lives. Um, and I think that all of that packaged up together um, is a journey through that takes us gently through um, examining how we work and uh, how our mind work, how our minds work. And actually, there's something about that that's just really, really um, useful. So I'm a really practical person. And so when I started to learn about this, I was in um, a, uh, I ran a business, I ran a property business, and I was in a big, huge bind. And I started to learn about this. And then I could see that I was actually tripping myself up all the time. And I was overthinking things. I didn't need to overthink and I didn't have clarity. And so actually navigating my life, even in those really difficult, stressful times, started to get easier. And I started to see a way through. And that's what we are sharing with people through this online course. And I think the thing that was amazing at the end of it, and we're going to show you a little video with some of the comments from some of the people that were on the course, other people got the same, the same degree of um, understanding of their mind, and they had a completely different relationship then with their own themselves, really, and also with their situations. That's correct. It's, um... What was really lovely about this phase of the programme was having access to resources that people could engage with when they were walking their dog on the way home from work, in the bath or wherever they were, wherever they were most comfortable. But then also having that support to meet up and discuss it with the facilitation and guidance of Aaron and Colette and my mum and I um, together. Um, we formed a real sense of community as well with the catch-ups that we had that were facilitated um, online. And then after um, we'd had the first phase of the programme, which was very much centred on personal and professional well-being, clarity and, you know, 
sort of a new understanding, we were then able to move into the second phase of the programme, which invited midwives to reconsider their work and think about how they could use what they'd learnt uh, with others in their in their teams and their colleagues and peers and also think about the transformation programme and how we can transform maternity and midwifery care for families. And so it's a really lovely way of bringing everything together and making it really relevant for the midwifery practice and maternity care provision. So in terms of the reflections, just to draw the presentation to a close, um, we wanted to just highlight some key things that felt really resonant for us. For me, what I found from listening and being with the midwives and working through the programme, it was incredible to hear midwives reflect on their, their um, ability to really see differences in their relationships with their colleagues. And notice that where once they felt that the problem was their colleague or somebody that they found difficult in their workplace, actually they could see a way that they could address that by reconsidering their own feelings and thoughts around it. And it was such a, a massive thing for them that it really transformed their relationships with some of these people that they'd been finding difficult for such a long time. And that for me was one of the real key moments when we think about cultural shifts and creating positive, compassionate cultures in maternity care. That felt like something really significant when I was listening to the reflections but not Aaron, if you wanted to share a programme reflection yeah. from your point of view. Well, the, the part that really meant the most to me from the programme is seeing really committed people that love what they do starting to appreciate their potential to have a new state of mind. So to see people who felt somewhat victimised and trapped in feelings of stress and distress, just start to feel the hope and, and, and the enthusiasm that maybe there was more internal buoyancy available without a lot of work, without a lot of effort. And that kind of confidence and feeling of freedom and joy that comes from knowing there's more possible than you realized and having the experience of being able to be uh clearer and 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 um clearer and i don't know what the word is but i guess have more confidence and well-being in the face of things that seemed somewhat daunting and unassailable before thank you i think just com coming to the end of the program i think it's probably a good time to hear from what the midwives themselves shared with us and um, so I'd just like to close the presentation with a little video. So just to give you an idea of the impact for the individuals. In this video, you can explore how the One Thought programme has helped midwives to unlock their mind's potential, creating meaning for midwives. Listen to the words of midwives who have experienced the One Thought online programme. The programme actually changed my mindset and experience on so many relationships, both my family and work colleagues. In the past, I would have been in a spiral and not able to function and gone off sick from work. But I was able to pick myself up and go to work and I was surprisingly able to do my job without worrying about anything else and by just not thinking about it, I feel a lot better. I normally go off sick and feel unwell but I've noticed that I feel differently. I feel really lucky to have had the chance to participate in this course. I appreciate the commitment to well-being which is really not a common phenomenon in our working lives. I would recommend this course for all NHS staff, regardless of their roles. I'll be looking into how to purchase the One Thought course for my team once we've finished. I'm using the technique of questioning my thoughts about colleagues and not accepting them as authentic or real. I think it works well. It's made me think deeper about my response to situations and also how to respond to others. 
I feel more empowered and self-caring of my needs. I found all the sessions so valuable. I would go as far to say that even after my first session, my personal family relationships started to change for the better. In my professional life, I feel it's given me more of a push to focus time and attention on my own well-being. This has made me more compassionate and attentive to those I work with. I would recommend this for all NHS staff. This programme came at the right time in my life while I was going through a very challenging period. This programme is the building blocks to emotional intelligence. So we'd just like to say um, that if people are interested in joining our 2023 programme, um, you can take a QR code here. I'll send the link to Sue to put up a, with the with the links tonight, uh, or you can email us at info at orphanmaternity.com. And we would just want to say a huge thank you to everybody for listening.